The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And surprise, surprise, folks, we got markets, all of them right now in the green. S&P is positive by nine points, trading at 32.15. The NASDAQ positive by 76 points. I got to get used to this one, trading at 10,026. Dow futures up 44 points at 27,309, and we have the Russell up a point as well, trading at 1509. Gold contract extending some of the gains we had yesterday at 1729. Silver up 30 cents at 1808, and the oil contract negative 57 cents at 3838. We got oil numbers at 10:30 a.m. this morning. We're going to get CPI right now at 8:30 a.m. Uh, coming at you, and we're also, it's Fed Day. We're gonna get Jerome Powell this afternoon. Quite an extension for the markets. S&Ps, of course, clawing back all of the losses for the calendar year, turning positive for 2020 on Monday, sustaining some of that action on Tuesday, as in slightly in the red as the NASDAQ hit 10,000 for the first time yesterday. This morning, we were below 3,200. I was up at about 5.30, maybe six in the morning this morning. I said, ah. Maybe that was it, right? Maybe that was it. Maybe you wait for the S&P to get to positive territory for the year. Maybe you wait for the NASDAQ to get to 10,000, and then maybe you see a little bit of a pullback, a healthy pullback, you could call it, uh, for some context on the s and I mean, this run, or now, you can see it there, above the 786 completely, right? But if you just look at, right, this run from May 14th, all the indices, an incredible run up since that date. A healthy pullback to the downside, folks, could easily see us right back to around 3,052. That's a 382. That would be a healthy pullback within an uptrend. You can't go up forever. And we just went up almost 500 S&P points from May 14th. You put it on the Dow. I've talked about it a lot, but man, oh, man, huge numbers. You put it on the Dow in terms of where we are in the full. We're right now above a 786 of the full retracement of the move down. But again, you just look at things from May 14th, the Dow traded from 22,700. Did we make it a full, almost a full 5,000 points within 100 points of 5,000 Dow points from May 14th. So you wanna see what a healthy pullback looks like when you just went almost 5,000 points. A healthy pullback pulls us down to 25, excuse me, 25,756. You're talking about 1,500 Dow points, easy. Um, you could see in a healthy pullback, a natural pullback in the market. We'll see what happens, but you know what? You know what I have on my radar this morning? With the NASDAQ rocking, we all heard the headlines probably, maybe. Apple, Microsoft, huge days yesterday. How about Tesla having a huge day? And how about Tesla poised to open at record all-time highs, look at that acceleration starting at about 6.45 a.m. this morning. You have Tesla, you have the man himself, Elon Musk, talking about it may be time to start producing that semi-truck they have. 998.52, uh, we'll see if we hit 1,000 today on Tesla. Jumping around to some of the stocks that really had action yesterday, Facebook, I mean, check out that acceleration, right? Up almost $10 yesterday from the 230 range, closing it out at the 240 range. We're gonna open higher today as well. You saw Apple shares really accelerating higher from the 330 range pre-market yesterday to 345. We're up at about 348.03. Amazon, all-time highs as well. We trade from 25.20 in the pre-market, up basically $100 to 26.20, sold off a little bit at the end of the day, but guess what? We closed it out at 2,600. We're gonna open $35 higher at 26.35. Some of the other tech stocks out there, um, Microsoft had not fared as well. Let me jump over, which was interesting, right? And 
We talked to our man Kevin Hinks to start off the 10 o'clock program, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Of course, you can listen to Kevin, the whole team at the TD Ameritrade Network at 11 o'clock. If you haven't checked it out, folks, options, defined risk, great program. Um, and just talking about that some of the FANG stocks were acting almost as risk off trades, right? You had risk off, you had gold trading higher, you had notes and bonds trading dramatically higher yesterday, and you had Apple and Amazon and Facebook dramatically higher yesterday. With those, as the market, the major indices were actually in negative territory yesterday. Uh, Microsoft was up, but you see from about 188 to maybe 190-ish, 191.28 this morning. Google shares, not quite the same pop, right? There's Google, there's your action yesterday, basically up $10 from 1445 to 1455. We're gonna open positive territory again this morning. Netflix shares, about 437 and um, as we mentioned it cpi was coming out right at 8 30 as we came on the air so there's your headline there u.s cpi fell 0.1 percent in may versus a flat reading expected so pretty close to in line the markets no real huge reaction a little bit of a pop you could say now that's on a 15 minute drilling this down to a five minute let's take those trend lines off even so you see the pop really taking place at about 8 a.m. We trade a bit higher. We got those numbers at 8.30. Pretty muted response in the s and is holding at about that 32.15 level. You see the fall off last night at about 4.30 in the morning. You trade down from 32.20, we'll call it, down to almost 31.90. So you're talking about almost 30 S&P points. But check out that V-shaped recovery even overnight on a five-minute bar. We'll see if we challenge those highs. Uh, gonna have to get used to that NASDAQ at 10,000, 10,031. What's interesting here is I, I imagine they're gonna take the decimals probably off of this now that it's a five digit number. The Dow on the Thinkorswim platform, I was just looking at it today. I said, man, that number looks big on the NASDAQ. They still got decimals. I think they're gonna take that off. They don't put the decimals on the Dow, but quite a number, 10,000 on that NASDAQ. Jumping around to some other stories going on this morning. So we mentioned it, it is Fed Day. What's next from the Fed will help decide the course for the market. So the Fed started a meeting yesterday. They come up with a statement today, 2 o'clock. You're going to get a press conference as well. Strategists expect Fed Chairman Powell to seek to soothe markets, but there are some questions. Pros hope to have answers like how much Treasury purchases does the Fed plan as the government issues more and more debt. The Fed will, will be revealing its first forecast for the economy and interest rates since late last year as it skipped a forecast in March just as the pandemic forced an abrupt shutdown of the economy. The market going to be waiting for that. Things could see an exciting open, could see an exciting uh First couple hours in trading, as you approach that two o'clock mark, you may see things calm down a bit and just wait for that uh, announcement, wait for the press conference and see what the man himself, Jerome Powell, has to say about this economy and what the Fed will be doing. Because one argument you can make is the only reason that the markets are where we are right now is the fact that the Fed and Congress has acted uh, maybe unparalleled in uh, in my history, maybe in um, you know generations history in terms of the amount of record stimulus, trillions of dollars. And guess what? If that's what allows this economy to rebound in the two, three, six month uh, horizon that the market's telling us is going to happen, why not? Let's check in on the VIX this morning as the market chugs higher. Now this is interesting stuff, right? Last week we had the VIX at 23.54. We have the S&Ps within 20 points of basically being positive for the year. We have the NASDAQ comp above 10,000. We have the Dow up 5,000 points almost since May 14th. And the VIX just traded from 2354. We're still above 27. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be going over some other equities with earnings and news this morning. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in three minutes. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, everyone. We got the S&Ps positive by 8, NASDAQ positive by 80, holding above 10,000, and the Dow positive by 16 right now. Part of the big reason of those 5,000 points that the, the Dow has had since about May 14th, and I say about 5,000, is the run-up in Boeing. Boeing pairing some of that, though, yesterday, pulling back from that 239 high that it had just after the close on Monday. Boeing going to trade a bit lower as well this morning from 216 to 212. Jumping around some of the other equities with news. So five below really moving this morning. They had a quarter lo quarterly loss of 91 cents compared to a consensus estimate of 33 cent loss. The discount retailer's revenue came in below forecast, although the company said about 90% of its stores have now reopened. Five is their symbol. Whoops, F-I-V-E. And talk about an acceleration from 100 to 116. That's like 16, 16%, uh, right? You closed yesterday at almost 104, though, so we're up about $12. Talk about a pop on that news. And, uh, and I imagine they're talking about 90% of the stores still open. And uh, guess what? You see in here, let's jump around because there's a few equities that caught my eye. So they had a quarterly loss of 91 cents a share. Now, where was it? Somebody had $6 plus. Where are we? Yeah, Red Robin Group. So check out this one. $6.66 per share they lost for the first quarter compared to looking for $1.10. Revenue also came in below estimates. Comp store sales falling 20.8%. Red Robin's business hit hard by the pandemic-related closures. But the company said trends have been improving in recent weeks as restaurants reopen. RRGB is their symbol. Tale of Two Worlds, not quite the pop that five got, right? You go from 17 down to 15. The conference call began at 8 o'clock in the morning. You're trading up a bit for some context of where we've been here. From 37 to 4. My goodness, right? And now we're back at 16, 15. Um, just a, a remarkable drop-off for five. You, you Quite a different world. You go from uh, 115 
down to 47, but we're going to open today right back at 116. Let's find that in the chart. 116. Yeah, so you're right in this range that you were at prior to COVID, which is a remarkable feat for some of these. Now, one of the stories back there as well, AMC. Tom and I talked about this. I talked about this. So we're trading higher. We got some news on AMC in terms of they're going to be open back up in July, I believe. But, but folks, if, if this stock was trading at $6.35 in January, and I'm picking arbitrary dates, what's the high here? The, the low of this high bar, the low of the bar, $7.713. The bid ask right now is just under seven, all right? This is where the bid ask is. We had a tough day yesterday as and we pulled back. Look at this trend. But you're telling me AMC has repaired everything like the COVID didn't even happen? Now, AMC has really had some tough goes. But AMC, and I believe I have an article, yeah. So they're going to reopen theaters globally in July. Shares rise. AMC Entertainment said it expects to reopen its theaters globally in July after shutting them down in mid-March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It expects to run with limited capacity and block seating to maintain safety at its theaters. Last week, it flagged substantial doubts about its ability to continue operations if it was forced to keep its theaters closed for a longer period Said on Tuesday, it expects to reopen the theaters globally in July after shutting them down. The world's largest movie theater operator said it was planning to reopen almost all of its U.S. and U.K. theaters in time to showcase Christopher Nolan's Tenet, Tenet, slated for release on July 17th. So you're talking about approximately five weeks from right now, and then you have Disney Disney's Mulan on July 24th, the following. So they want to be ready for that. What I don't understand is, I mean, even if you're going um, one seat, maybe in between, you're losing between 20 and 30 per 40% of your capacity, right? If you take one out of every three seats, that's 33%. You could make a case that you could pair up, uh, you know, two people go together, then you have one seat, you're losing capacity no matter what. So in a world where movie theaters were already in trouble, so, you know, Disney had a great year last year. 10 films, I think, grossed more than a billion dollars in the box office, so they came in with 10 plus billion dollars in box office revenue, which is why you saw Disney got hit pretty hard. Still not quite back up to where you might expect with the growth that they've had in Disney Plus streaming, jumping around to everything here. But there's your full year back on AMC. Now let's, let's even just really for some context here, right? I mean, you're talking about from January of 17, you were at 33. October of 18, so you're approaching two years. You go from 20 down to two. You're back at six. You don't need to be a chartist to see this downtrend, folks. Um, yeah, we've had a pop off the lows. But that's a tough one because they were already dealing with a lot of woes in terms of people are, whether it's Netflix, whether it's Disney, whether it's, you know, uh, now Disney owns Hulu, ESPN Plus, uh, all of those streaming, you know, HBO Max coming online. And let's just zoom it in. So this is going to be, and there's your run from Disney. So not quite back up. How do you have a, a, a stock like AMC back to pre-COVID levels and you don't have a stock like Disney? They're both dealing with some problems. Disney's had a huge acceleration in their Disney Plus streaming numbers. Their parks aren't even open until July as well, but the movie theaters aren't open either. And they still have the problem of competing with the likes of Amazon and Netflix, uh, as in Amazon Prime, Netflix, HBO. Interesting stuff when you start seeing AMC trading back to pre-COVID levels when they're telling us that they want to be ready to showcase a movie that opens in five weeks on July 17th. Craziness, I feel like, sometimes. Okay, some of the other stocks with headlines jumping over. Well, before we do, mortgage demand. So this was kind of cool. Mortgage demand from home buyers amazes again, now up 13% annually despite rising rates. Well, yesterday they did not rise. That's for sure. We saw quite um, a rise in the price, lower yields. Application for loans to purchase a home rose 5% last week from the previous week, 13% higher than a year ago. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed mortgages rose to 3.38%. That's, that's quite a number from 3.37. Okay, here we go. Stocks will come to the top. Chewy, yeah, Chewy, the big food, uh, dog food, animal food, Retailer posted a loss of 12 cents a share, smaller than the 16 the market was looking for. They also reported better than expected revenue and an upbeat revenue forecast. Active customers now stand at 15 million, up from 33% a year ago. That's remarkable. Now, I don't personally have any pets right now. Love to maybe get a nice big dog, maybe a nice German Shepherd sometime in the future. I mean, look at this acceleration from that March 13th low, $20. We're going to open basically flat, a little bit lower at 50.77 on their numbers, pretty close to in line. You see the volatility there from 53 to 48 to 50, but remarkable, you can see. 
that somehow it goes in the beginning of COVID from above 30 to 20 and talk about accelerating. Maybe, you know, everyone's home, right? Everyone's home with their pets, buying pet food, buying all sorts of food. Maybe you're buying more pets because you're spending so much time at home. You can actually be with them, take care of them. And uh, Chewy, right at about $50. You see the acceleration there. Remarkable, they've grown so much in a year because I would say even as a non-pet owner, they are a known brand last year and somehow they are still crushing it on the growth. Other companies here with earnings jumping around. We, we talked about AMC. We talked about Red Robin. GameStop, so they're out with their numbers. $1.61 a share for the latest quarter. That's what they lost. Greater than the loss of $1.27. The retailer's revenue slightly below forecast. Comp store sales, excluding closed locations. So excluding those closed locations fell 17%. What's up with that? They're a game company. And when you're comparing only stores that are open, one bright start. One bright spot, a 519% increase in e-commerce sales. Here's the deal. Percentages can get really weird when you're at very small numbers. What were they doing last year on e-commerce sales? If they were doing $100,000 last year in e-commerce sales, then they could do $519,000 in e-commerce sales and tout that number, and it would be negligible, right? Something to consider when you're looking at percentages off small numbers. GameStop down a bit to 467. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back in three minutes. See what else we have on tap for Wednesday trading. It's Fed Day. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures positive by about eight at 3213. The Dow futures positive by eight as well as 27,272. I got a graphic up here at CNBC. Just remarkable, the volatility that we have had. And I mentioned it from May 14th. I, I'd like to see this. Maybe we'll put one together at TFNN of a graphic since May 14th because it's been a stunning run to the upside, especially in the Dow, but staggering numbers. Uh, of course, we get the jobs number on Friday. You see the lead up to the jobs number. I mean, the Dow had already priced in 3.5% before Friday's number. Friday adds 3.2. You're talking 6.7% last week alone. And Monday we open and we say that's not enough. We're going up 1.7. We're down 1.1. And jumping back, we get the VIX at uh, above 27. So Starbucks, chart of Starbucks up here, quite a drop off. That's what will happen, folks. When you tell the world that we lost $3 billion in revenue in the latest quarter due to coronavirus pandemic of a Starbucks pull, bull, owned some Starbucks in some capacity, um, but they lost 3.2 billion in revenue during the fiscal third quarter. The coffee chain expects to swing to a loss in the fiscal third quarter. It also expects same store sales in the US and China to decline 10 to 20% for the full fiscal year. The chain is forecasting adjusted losses per share 55 cents to 70 cents. It expects fiscal fourth quarter earnings will improve. Uh, predicting adjusted earnings to 15 to 40 for the full fiscal year. They expect same store sales in the U.S. to decline 10 to 20 percent. Numbers here, though, pretty interesting. Same store sales fell 43 percent in May as, as the company reopened locations with modified hours. By the end of the month, 91 percent of the U.S. stores had been reopened in May. In the last week of May, same store sales tumbled just 32%, just 32%. I don't know if I would use the word just, but everything is context. Uh, but Starbucks getting hit hard on that from 83 down to 8016. And a couple other equities before we wrap it up. You have Amazon unveiling small business credit line with Goldman and the latest tie up between tech and Wall Street as Amazon looks to open at all time highs. And how about MGM? They're gonna reopen more Vegas casinos following the strong performance of some of those casinos already open. MGM looking to open a bit higher today. Stay tuned folks, Larry Pesavento, live with Trade What You See at nine o'clock.